Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be conducting a thermal test in this case known as the ASU AP201 Prime. Before I begin, I'd like to thank ASU Singapore to have provided this case and some of the components that I've made use of right now to share with you guys. In this thermal test, I will be conducting, of course, with the mesh on. Now, the only thing changes is that right now, all these fans are located in this direction as in like the radiator fans is exhausting hot air passing through the radiator and the rear is exhausting hot air to the back and at the bottom is taking cool air from the bottom i will be changing the location of the top radiator fans and the rear but not the bottom reason being right at the bottom the gpu in fact is trying to draw cool air in and if i were to reverse the uh, bottom fans to exhaust right it's going to fight between the GPU and the uh, exhaust fan at the bottom. So I'm not going to touch it. I'll leave it as intake. Else I'll be conducting the test based on the fact that right now this position followed by the intake instead of exhaust from the radiator and the intake from the rear instead of exhaust. Let's begin. Before I talk about the methodology, these are all the PC components that I'll be using. You can pause this video and to read through all the specs. There'll be two applications that I'll be using. The Cinebench R23, this is meant to stress test the CPU. And Unigen Superposition, this is meant to stress test the GPU. And the lower section over here where you see four diagrams, A to D, this are the indication diagrams on the actual benchmark, which I'm going to show you later. It will tell you the orientation of the fence with all these yellow arrows. Now, take note, on this configuration itself, my liquid AIO is at the top. So be it diagram A to D, my liquid AIO is at the top. Next will be the configuration on my RAMs, my processor, the PPO2 and such. This in fact is the interface of the B650M tough motherboard coming from ASU. So as mentioned, first thing I do is AI tweak and I will set the uh, RAMs to Expo 1, which my RAMs can run at 6000 clock speed. The rest over here I'm not touched inclusive of the um, V call. I'll set it to auto. Next thing I did is the precision boost overdrive. Now, a lot will just go advanced and to go to this setting here, AMD overclocking, and to set your PBO2. Now, I've tested this and been fiddling with this um, section here where it says advanced. I've tried all the settings, but it does not work. No matter what kind of configuration I've done, right? Be it I lower down or, you know, to pump it up. When I run the system itself, right, it always go beyond whatever I've actually set. For example, the uh, PPT limit, which is your power drawn, it will not stay at this configuration. It will go above like 200. This is 185, so it will go above 200. Having to say this, right, after fiddling with this interface itself, I found a method, which is set this to auto, ignore totally on this uh, configuration, just focus on your AI tweaker whereby this position overdrive i mean boost overdrive right it has this profile here now take note on this profile it's pretty neat if you wouldn't want to do manual right you can just set it to um, enhancement whereby you can cap the uh, temperature to run on 80 degree 70 degree or at 90 degrees but the only thing is that if you set this right based on the temperature itself your power draw will still be over 200 what and above and there's another mode which is the ego mode you can set it based on the uh, power drawn not an issue but even if i were to set 170 right it will just go above 170 which is like 180 something so these are the um, so-called straightforward tweaking on under voting for me i would just do manual so later on when I show you right, this will all be stated as fixed as in like the PPT and EDC and such. And also I've set my curve optimizer as I know that this 7950X processor has a very good bin or should I say silicon. That's why I set it to negative 20. The next thing I've done, which is the fans itself. Now, the profile on the fence, as you can see here, I've set all to turbo profile. Be it the radiator fence, the uh, rear fan, and the uh, bottom fence. 
The only thing is different is my pump, which I set it to full. Okay, just to show you the chassis fan. See, all these are in turbo profile. So this will be fixed throughout the whole benchmark. The methodology is pretty straightforward. There will be two sections of tests. One is the processor stress test. Next will be the graphic card stress test. Now, as you can see, the diagram over here, right? you will be witnessing later when you look at the actual benchmark. I've compiled all this recording together so you can look side by side and to do the comparison. And all this are of different orientation, as I mentioned to you, style A, style B, style C, and style D. Now, how I conduct each and individual, I mean, benchmark itself. First off, around 10 minutes of R23 Cinebench and let it sit at idle, as you can see over here. Once it has a consistent idle temperature, I'll run the 30 minutes, then I'll do the recording. And as you can see here, these are all the recordings that I've compiled for you. So this is the processing test. Next will be the GPU test itself. Now, same thing, I've compiled all the individual recordings so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, having you say this right, how I do the test is I run two rounds of superposition and the third round, I'll do the recording. So all these tests are based on the third recording. Things to take note for CPU and the GPU itself are all the sets as mentioned, the temperature, the clock speed and such. So after the whole sequence that I've witnessed, I will talk about the result. Here we go. The results are out first with the orientation on my extreme left. This is compiled at the uh, CPU stress test where I gather all the stats that you see over here. For example, the temperature, I'll take the minimum and the maximum off from the benchmark and to divide by two to have this average. Same goes to the speed. And for the uh, GPU itself, which is on my right, this is taken from the GPU stress test. Again, average on the temperature and the power drawn. At the center over here, this is CPU either whereby it does nothing. So this is just for, for your reference. Something to take note on the CPU that I've extracted out from the benchmark itself. All this test be tested, be it A to D, the power drawn is at consistent of 187 watt to 189 watt. In fact, I've set the PPT to 185. It did went a bit more, which is two to four watts more is okay so long it didn't pass 190 or 200 watts and as for gpu right consistently it's running at a speed of 1875 megahertz at a milliwatt of 0.844 now speaking of which the style a b c and d as you can see over here this is accordingly to each row so meaning to say that if it's a over here right the cpu is following a style the gpu is following a style Take a look at the overall stats provided over here. You will notice that there are green highlights. And what are these for? The green highlights is tell you that these are good results. I'll start off with the CPU benchmark. If you were to take a look at the style A to D and looking at this stats over here, right, you will notice that, oh, there are more green highlights on C and D. So practically, I will just choose style C and D to mount your fan as in like the orientation. But if you take a closer look, Taking the style A, B versus C and D. Look at the temperature. For A and B, it's only 0 0.1 degree more compared to C and D, which is not very significant. And as for the speed, right, all this style, in fact, is hovering at 5.1 gigahertz and boost clock of 5.4 to 5.6. And it's 
only by a margin, a small margin. If you compare A, B versus C and D, look at the uh, clock speed. It's only 0.01 gigahertz more on C and D, which is not significant. Now, if I were to choose C and D again, right, my motherboard is going to suffer. Take a look at the temperature, A and B versus C and D. There is a drastic change. So I would prefer to choose a much cooler motherboard to run that because that is one of the main part of your computer along with your CPU and your GPU. Next will be your M.2. Yes, if I were to choose C and D, right, look at the temperature. It's going to increase again. I know the M.2 can run at 50 degrees Celsius, but I would to prefer to run it at a moderate of 43 to you know 45 degrees Celsius, which I would choose A. Now, again, if you do argue, hey, I'm going to take C and D again. Look at the temperature on your GPU. It's going to shoot up. Though it's not very much as in like 70 degrees Celsius, but what would you prefer? Would you prefer to have it at 69, 70 degrees Celsius or 63 or 64 degrees Celsius? So I'll definitely choose either A or B. Coming to the TJ Junction, you might be arguing that, hey, look, clear, if you take A style, right, it'll be 82 degrees Celsius. But look at the overall. If I'm going to take style A, right, look at the power drawn. In order for me to sustain at 1875, it's at 288 watt. So I don't mind sacrificing the 2 degree on the TJ Junction. There you have it. My choice will be, I'll be taking A. Because this is an overall balance, which actually is a no-brainer. Most of the uh, style of what PC builders have been doing, right, they follow the A style, which I've actually illustrated on my other video uh, on the Renku 3 case, which is on style E, which is similar to this. Hope you guys have enjoyed what I've shared with you and I'd like to thank ASUS Singapore to have provided the case and some of the components for me to share with my viewers. With this said, if you guys are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care, goodbye, see ya.